to Mr. Alex Angel's freshmen. I heard the freshmen this year are exceptionally good from all your freshman theology teachers. So, sister, you're in for a treat. Um, and then my class or is, is the uh, sophomore theology class. Uh, we are in Osh Diocesan School, part of which is that all students each semester will be doing a Christian service project to help us realize the mission of the church is to continue the mission of Jesus in serving those around us. Uh, last semester, because of, you know, um, things didn't work out, but this semester we were able to invite Sister Jennifer, Randy, and Miss Elvia. Elvia from Good Shepherd uh, Center from downtown Los Angeles here to present about uh, the wonderful ministries and works that Good Shepherd uh, Ministry is doing in our Archdiocese and how we uh, students at Bishop Montgomery could help contribute a hand so that we could be the extended arms of Jesus to those around us. So without further ado, it is my honor to introduce to you Sister Jennifer. Good morning again. Um, do you have anyone in your family who is a sister of a priest? One, sister of priest. Uh, both. both? Wow, you're very blessed. Okay. So like Vincent said, my name is Sister Jennifer. I am a member of the Lovers of the Holy Cross of Los Angeles. I've been in the convent for 36 years. It will be 37 next summer. Okay. Um, so I'm from Good Shepherd Center for Homeless Women. We started the shelter first one in 1984, a long time ago. So we will be celebrating our 40th anniversary next year, actually. Have any of you ever met or know someone who is a homeless, a friend, a family member, a relative? No? Okay. Me neither. But I have never been homeless. But I think I can empathize and maybe feel a little bit of how the homeless women and children are going through. I was 13 years old, and my brother was 11. <clears throat> Have you ever heard of both people? <clears throat> Any of you? No. Okay. So there was a war in Vietnam, 1975. So the communists came to the south of uh, Saigon, south of Vietnam. So they bombed our town. And what we did was just try to escape the bomb. Okay, and afterward, many people risked their lives to escape Vietnam, just to find freedom. And they didn't even know when they got on the boat, what would happen to them. None of that happened. So I was one of them. In 1979, I escaped Vietnam with my younger brother, who was 11, I was 13. And I had no idea where I would be going. When I escaped Vietnam, I had nothing but the clothes on my back. Nothing else. I have no idea where I will be going, who will pick me up, where, who I will meet. Nothing. My mom gave me a sandwich bag of a half-wit filled with cooked rice, cooked dry rice, and that's it for two of us. It's less than us, less than a day for the food. In the boat, there were 50 of us. 50. 29 are children. 21 adults. We had no idea what we were going through. I'm going to show you this picture, uh, a very short video, just less than a minute, uh, two minutes. I put it together yesterday. On minor technical difficulties. Okay. 30 seconds. Okay, that's fine. I finished high school in two different countries with five different high schools and one adult high school for four years, not ready to cooperate. I went through six different schools. So I know how the homeless children are going through. We don't know why they're homeless. It could be 
abuse at home, could be they ran away from home, or the mom escaped from her husband with the children. They have to be located many times. So for myself, six different high schools for four years, high school. And I was counting yesterday, I left Vietnam in 1979. I ended up coming in 1986. From 1979 to 1992, 14 years, I relocated 14 times. I didn't know that much until yesterday that, wow, I counted. So with the homeless, if you are a student, you live in one shelter for a few months, and you move to another shelter. You have no root, no stability, no friends. That's what I went through. And so it's difficult. So with the homeless, as you can see, all the pictures here. Okay. When they're on the street, they don't know whom they're going to meet at night, who's going to go after them. They don't know that. <clears throat> and they don't know where the next meal is going to come from. That's what I went through when I was in a boat with 50 people. This is the actual boat that I escaped with, a small fishing boat. where they rescue us. So while I was on the boat, we were at the mercy of um, Mother Nature. Tiny boat in the ocean. We don't know what's gonna happen to us. So same thing with the homeless women and children, when they are on the street, they don't know. If people come through the, uh, to them, we'll be helping them or raping them, or beat them up. They don't know. When you go drive with your parents or with your loved ones on the freeway or on the street, you see tents, right? Put up, they look in the tent, away from the rain, from the sun. When I'm in the boat, there's no shade. When it's rain, Rain. We got soaked. So for 10 days, I have only one set of clothing, nothing else. No showers, no changing. We ran out of water, food. We, the pirate chased us, shot at us. We don't know what's going to happen. So that's what I feel like when I see the homeless women and children on the street. I kind of feel what they go through a little bit. Poverty, hunger. I came here with my younger brother. I have nothing. I remember yesterday I said, from 1979 to 1986, we both go here and there with only one suitcase. 
among myself and my brother. That's it. That's why we had we travel very light because we don't know where we're gonna go next uh, next stage or next city. We will always travel light. We stay with the homeless. They don't have anything. We travel very light. Even 1992, I was in this. I was a sister, but all I have just two luggages. I travel light too, but now I have all the things now. But just to let you know that if you see a person on the street, women, children, say a prayer for them. Because you don't know what they went through or how they would end up on the street. It could be anything. I was 16, 17. My brother was 15. He ran away from home. I didn't know how to be a mother to him. I was only two years older than him. So it was tough. I have to go find him. And then we have to, we live with our uh, sisters and her husband. It wasn't a good uh, situation. So we left. We took our suitcase get on the Greyhound bus from Pennsylvania to Texas without knowing the language. We just travel. So we don't know where we're going to That's how it happened with many of the homeless women too. If they were lucky enough, they find someone to help them along the way. Give them some food, some money. But many would just like, we presume that they're just lazy bum. You know, that's what we think. But they are not a lazy bum. Things happen to them, we don't know what happened, but that's how we ended up like that. So I want to give over to Olivia. Thank you, sister. Thanks to this student over here that helped me keep this on because I don't know if I work this. Um, I'm so glad that Sister uh, opened it up uh, the way that she did um, because I think if, uh, first of all, my name is Elvia and I serve as the Associate Director of Good Shepherd Center and I have been serving um, as their Associate Director for five years since January of 2017. Uh, prior to that, I was at the Downtown Women's Center for about, about a good seven years. The Downtown Women's Center is a very special place in the Skid Row community. It serves nothing but uh, women that are unhoused, living on the streets um, and in the sidewalks. Then I came to Good Shepherd Center. Uh, before that, I was at two different organizations, Jewish Family Services and Chicana Service Action Center. Um, so next month really marks my 22 years of being of service to women and children who have been impacted by domestic violence, trauma, homelessness, displacement. We've actually also uh, helped uh, women who have been uh, trafficked into the U.S. from other countries. So this is the work that we uh, have done. Um, a little bit of my, about my educational background, I'm a Brogen, so I did my, gra my undergraduate uh, work at UCLA, and then I just recently uh, got done from uh, doing my master's in social worker at SC. And um, what brings me to this, in 2001, um, I started as a Catholic school teacher teaching 7th and 8th graders in Watts, history and English. And um, I didn't make it. I didn't think it was a good fit for me. And I um, went back to my school, told my teacher, um, you know, everything you taught me, like, just didn't work for me. And they were like, calm down. Let me send you to this place where they're hiring. I think it's a good fit. And I stayed in the field of social work, serving others, domestic violence since that day. And, you know, I'm really grateful that I did because when sister tells you, you know, what we feel when we, uh, when we see people that are on house living on the streets, um, we, we have these very bad connotations about them. But I've been doing this for, for 22 years. It's the only thing I don't know, I, I know how to do. But they are the most fascinating individuals that you could ever cross path with. Like we, the three of us in, in our agency, are completely honored to serve women and children um, from the ages of zero all the way to, all the way to 18. Um, I think what makes Good Shepherd Center a very special place is our mission. We are very mission driven. We are very trauma informed, and we are the only agency in LA County where if 
you know, a boy is 11 or 13 or 15, up to 18 years old, and they are experiencing homelessness with their uh, mother, they get to come to our program. Usually boys under that age, um, uh, programs feel really weary about allowing them to come in when they are uh, experiencing homelessness. But Good Shepherd Center, that's, I think, what makes us very special. Like, all the red tape that there is around getting someone housed, like, we follow some rules, but we don't follow all the rules, right, within the systems that are very broken right now. Um, how many of you, I know Sister asked you, uh, you may not know uh, or have family members that are ex experiencing unhoused, but how many of you have seen women and children and, and men um, living outside in tents, under a freeway, um, in a parking lot, at a Home Depot, uh, living in their cars. How many of you have seen that in the past six months? So I'm going to remember if you raised your hand, and I want to ask you, how does that make you feel, just in one word, if you can just tell us how that makes you feel. I remember your hand going up. I think I remember, did you raise your hand too? Yeah. yeah. It kind of just made me sad. Yeah, yeah. You didn't raise your hand? Have you ever seen someone experience homelessness on the street? Oh, yeah. So, in one word? Oh, uh, uh, sad. Yeah, yeah. And so, these are all the things that I want you to hold on to as you see someone living um, on the streets, unsheltered, unhoused. And, you know, what can you do as, you know, a freshman or sophomore, you know, in high school being housed? Sometimes you just, I'm usually in awe when I'm in their presence. I am in awe when they come to us for service. But people just want to be seen. People just want to be seen. Uh, homelessness takes uh, dignity away from the people that we serve. And so a part of you giving back uh, the dignity that they've lost along the way of, you know, being unstable in housing is, you know, good morning, um, can I open the door for you? Because at the end of the day, these are people, these are mothers, these are aunties, these are grandmothers, these are sisters. And so um, that's how we like to see the women that we serve. And if you take anything from our presentation or my section is that, you know, when you see someone on the streets, just give them back that dignity that they've lost or someone has taken from them along the way. So on a macro level, like on a big systems level, what does Good Shepherd Center do? Um, I have the privilege of operating, um, of overseeing uh, five programs. Um, and these five programs all connect the women and the children, and now we help some men um, connect to housing. We have two uh, shelters for single women only. These are women from the ages of 18 all the way to 92 years old. So we have two very beautiful homes that house 30 women on any given night at Good Shepherd Center. So that's one program. And I'm going to quiz you after because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if you're really listening to how many programs we operate. So be ready, okay? Um, the second program we have is a permanent supportive housing program. This is another special program because we bring in a women uh, with disabling conditions. It could be their mental health, it could be their physical health, and as long as they have children, um, no more than two children, they can live here from the time that their children get there all the way until you know the 18 years old. And they get to pay 30% of whatever their income is. And then the housing authority, which is through the city, they pay 70%. So within that time frame, these this family is united, they come together, and they're no longer um, experiencing homelessness. Another program we have is um, in, uh, on our campus, 
um, is uh, Farley House, a very, very special program. This is a transitional housing program where these are one-bedroom apartments in the middle of Echo Park and MacArthur Park, and they get to oversee um, the downtown LA skyline. Like, that is where the women live. And there, they're with us for up to a year, and when they are with us, we connect them to housing resources because it isn't permanent housing. Although the women feel it is because it's a one-bedroom apartment, and they have their kitchen and their living room, their own bathroom. It, it, it isn't. It's just a transitional housing program. And that's the program that we are very proud of because we get to welcome a boys up to the age of 18. And, and that just makes us super uh, proud. And we have seen so many young men transition out of the programs and going to like the local Cal States, UC systems, even private. So that is what makes us stand out. And every time I get a chance to talk to special youth, that's the program I like to brag about. Another program we have is called Rapid Rehousing. The women and some men that are enrolled in that program do not live with us on site. They are in permanent housing. It could be here, it could be in Boyle Heights, it could be in Westwood, it could be in South LA, it could be all the way in Lancaster. So we help uh, these uh, people that come to our doors when they don't have housing and we place them. And, and we're, we use this art to speak to our landlords because a lot of landlords do not want to house the people that we serve. Why? Because it's what a sister told you, you know, they're lazy, they're in their addiction, you know, they have been formally incarcerated. And we label people that are unhoused, we call them the homeless. Have you noticed that I have not used that term in when I'm speaking to you? Homelessness? I've used unhoused, I've used people experiencing homelessness. Language is also very key to how you see a situation. So um, um, I could go on a tangent on this because I, this is like my passion. And so, but we'll, we'll, we'll stop there. The last program is my favorite program. It's called Housing for Health. And this program is funded through the County of Los Angeles. And the idea of this program is uh, to house the most vulnerable. And what does that mean? You house people that if you, that are living on the streets, literally, that are living in tents or, or going in and out of the emergency uh, service system. And what you wanna do, what the goal is, to get them into housing to stabilize their, their health. If providers do not prioritize and house those people, those people do um, die. They die living on the streets. These are women and men um, that have um, a chronic health condition. Uh, they have. Uh, they are living with mental illness. They are um, have a physical disabling conditions. So they are like, if homelessness has like this totem pole of who the most vulnerable uh, people are, it, it is them. So we have that program. We launched that program in 2017, and it is like, I think one of our favorite programs. Um, the beauty of all of all of our programs. Uh, rapid rehousing and housing for health, and I'm going to quiz you, so don't go to sleep on me. Um, our housing retention is between 94% and 97%, and that is huge. What does that mean? It means that whoever comes to us for care and we house them, they keep their housing um, for many, many years. And so I think that's what Sister wanted me to share um, and so now, here comes the top quiz. How many programs does Good Shepherd Center operate? Yes. Yes. And what are they? Um, I think the one is Rapid Housing. Rapid Rehousing. Um, HFH. Um, health for health. Housing for Health. Okay. And then we have the three shelters. Okay. Here comes the last one, and it's probably the easiest one. What makes us stand out as an agency? Let's see if we have some. What makes us stand out? What is the one thing I bragged about? Yes. Taking some men too. Yeah, 
Yeah, you're warm. You're warm. You like it 0.5. It's not all there. What was the most special thing that we do at Good Shepherd Center? Yes. That you guys have teenage boys under 18. That's it. So you make one. So yeah, that was that was it. Um, do you have any questions or you know, um, do you do you see people experiencing homelessness in a different light? If you don't, please do. They are our sisters, our brothers, they are mothers and grandmothers, and they are the most phenomenal people that you can cross paths with. Okay? Any questions? Okay, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I was hungry and you gave me food. Religious social teaching is clear. Helping others is a core human value. As the needs of society have grown more complex, how we serve the least of our brethren has turned political. But for 100 years, Catholic Charities of Los Angeles has worked to serve the vulnerable and poor. Starting with soup kitchens and food pantries, in an area of Los Angeles once known as Charity Street. The agency now operates eight homeless shelters, 18 community centers, and over 50 okay, programs. So we're be about the basics of In this episode of The Visionaries, you'll learn about three of these programs, youth employment, immigrant we rights, and housing services for homeless women and children. And you'll see that whether someone is here legally or illegally, whether they are religious or not, the mission of Catholic Charities of Los Angeles doesn't waver. Let's now join Sister Rosalind Vu, who is part of the street outreach team from the Good Shepherd Center for Homeless Women and Children. The team provides basic necessities like food and clothing and referrals to shelters and also support services to women living on the streets. It's all part of Good Shepherd's mission to empower women and children to move from homelessness to self-sufficiency. When God created God, I, who want to be the homeless, I'm sure no one raised a hand. No one wants to become a homeless. Hello, David. Hello, Claudia. Good morning. Hey, hold it for me, please. OK. okay. okay. LA is called the capital of the homelessness. I have been working with uh, these programs for over 30 years. But I see the homeless population increasing. The cost of living goes up every day, but unfortunately, income doesn't. And especially if you're already on a fixed income, it's really difficult to survive in California. Good Shepherd uh, opened 1984 um, because of the homeless women increasing in downtown Los Angeles. We provide housing and uh, employment and uh, also supportive services to empower women and children to move from homelessness to self-sufficiency. Our mission is to uh, serve them with dignity and love. Oh, that's oh, pumpkin bread, yes. So, women much as we hate to say it, are easier to victimize. So women on the streets are often put in positions where they might have to do something they don't want to do in order to get a meal or in order to have someone pay for a hotel for them. Sister Rosalind, she goes on outreach in our van three days a week. She's very familiar with the encampments and alleyways, and she will go out 
and take food, oh, clothing, that's beautiful, huh? Uh -huh. hygiene products, and also okay. referrals, a uh, list of other shelters where folks can go, oh, including our shelter. If you need to live in the shelter right now, oh, yeah. you have to go to the uh, Rogan for the health, um, mental health. When a person comes in a shelter, not only do they have meals or they have shelter, but then they have counseling. You work with them, you help them get involved within a community to stabilize their life so that they have a support system within their lives. At Good Shepherd Center, we house 93 women per night and 45 children. On a yearly basis, we provide services to over 1,500 women. We have a transitional housing program for moms with up to two children. And then we have a permanent supportive housing site with moms and their children. Now, I grew up in Los Angeles. I was born and raised here. I have two master's degrees in business and in project management. And I have one son. He's 16 years old now in the 11th grade. My pride and joy and <laughs> what I live for. We lived in an apartment um, for 10 years. They decided they wanted to increase the rent, so they didn't accept my rent. So that was one of the first times that I became homeless. I didn't know that there were places like the Good Shepherd Center that had resources that would help women with children. Once we got here to um, the Good Shepherd Center, my son made a comment to me because he was really angry, you know, and he was like, I don't know why we had to come here. Why did you give up our apartment? And I said, because I said something better has to be around the corner for us. I went to the employment center every single day to search for jobs. It just so happens I met another angel, and she actually worked in the employment center. And she handed me a flyer, and the flyer was for a vocational program. It was away from the site here, and it was a web technology class. I was asked to do an internet radio show with the president and CEO of the other agency. I showed her my web portfolio that I had started, and she came back like 10 minutes later. She was like, okay, I want to offer you a full-time job with full benefits at this dollar amount and I just started crying I just remember it's super surreal you never want to go back to being where you were and um, when she gave me the job I could not stop crying <laughs> I was just very grateful and thankful my son was just so excited he didn't know what to do and um, he was like, so we get to move now, huh, Mom? We get to move. He said, the only thing I asked for is my own bedroom. <laughs> because, you know, we shared a room for, you know, 10 and a half months. I've been able to get a two-bedroom house um, for my son and I. I'm still gainfully employed, thank God. <laughs> my son is thriving in school is really rewarding once you see a family transition out of our programs and into permanent housing and she's still housed and i think that speaks to her resiliency and that speaks to um, her hard work and her effort and her commitment to ending homelessness and i always viewed her and women accessing our programs as they are our partners they're not just our clients, they are our partners in ending the cycle of homelessness. Oh, very happy, get the new home now, right? Okay. I think the role of Catholic Charities is not only to celebrate people's life when they accomplish the things that they do, but when they come to you at the most vulnerable time, and again, it's driven, I think, by our faith, by the compassion of people who work here, they weep with them. They journey with them. They suffer with them uh, through very difficult moments of their life. And, and why the celebration, I think, means more to people. I was born in Vietnam. So all my life in Vietnam was in war. So until I uh, escaped from Vietnam with some other sisters to Thailand, I, I stayed in a refugee camp. My passion for homeless is I have experienced how to be a homeless myself. 
the name of the shelter. God is a good shepherd, and God used my hands to help people, my heart to, to love them. Hi, thank you very much. Uh, it was a very beautiful video. So all of you saw, my name is Randy Salinas. I'm the administrative assistant that works at the Shepherd Center with Elvia and Sister Jennifer. I'm gonna talk a little bit about what Monsignor Cox mentioned in there, what Sister Anne mentioned, and the name of what Good Shepherd Center is. Everybody knows probably the story of the Good Shepherd, right? Tending to the sheep. This is what Good Shepherd Center does. Present a special mission just by God in our faith to provide not only services, with love, dignity, and respect. Many of the people that go through these experiences that they both share with you have gone through the most hardest moments. And when we get those calls every day, we see them at sometimes the most lowest points in their life, the bottom that they can be at. And when we hear the emotion, we hear their pain, we know that there is hope, that there's something better for them, like she said. And there is. This is where we all come in, right? This is not only our mission, it's a human mission. You fit in this mission. We found this in this mission. As a society, we all do, right? To help those who, who need our support. So when we get a call in the day, like I said, we, they're telling us their story. They're saying, you know, I've called this shelter. I've gone this shelter. I've been here. I've done that. It's still not working. I, I, I can't. I, you know, we hear them cry. We hear them break down. Sometimes they end up on us. They're so frustrated. They just don't know what to do. Um, but this is where the love comes in, the compassion, the empathy to say, you know what, I'm just here to hear you out. And it's going to be okay one way or another, right? If they come to our shelter, we're going to do whatever we can because this is someone's life. I know Elvie always tells me, <laughs> we're not here to move chairs, we're not here to move tables, but we're here to move lives along. And that's what it is. It's a priority. It's, it, for us, it's always moving you know, as fast as we can to, with the resources we can to help those that we can. So really, I just wanted to end it that way because I know that it was just so profound already. The video talks about everything that we go through, but... <coughs> From the front lines, I could tell you I've worked directly with clients at the front line. And I could tell you that when they come in every day, some of them have went job searching, have had doors slammed in their face, have been told, no, you're not good enough, you're not right, or you're sick, or you have severe mental health, or you can't make it. But when, we, when they come through our doors, a smile, you know, how are you today, good morning, good afternoon, it goes a long way. A smile can go a long way. So that is really what we are, what Monsignor said, um, and the Sister Anne said, and Sister Jennifer mentioned all of that, our mission, is to empower women and children through supportive services, but to give them the resources they need to become self-sufficient, what does that mean? To be on their own, to live on their own, to be able to, to take care of themselves with the supportive services, which we do. Even when they're in permanent housing, we do our best to support them. So that's really what we're here for. And like all of the, like Sister mentioned, I too have gone through those similar journeys. Elvia knows many people that have gone through those similar journeys. We can be here today, and she tells you this all the time, and there tomorrow. So just always keep that in mind, like they said, it's someone else's mom, someone else's sister, someone else's brother, someone else's aunt. Could be us, could be you. So always remember that, and we thank you very much for coming today, and really being here with us, and, and hearing our story about uh, individuals experiencing homelessness. Some of the pictures you're more than welcome to come see. And then we're going to open it up for any questions that you may have regarding the shelter, how it works, what services, or how you can help, or how your families can help us.
So thank you very much. Uh, Randy, Ms. Uh, Alvia. Alvia, and uh, Sister Jennifer, thank you so much for your time. Um, part, of, part of the Christian Service Project is that the students at Bishop Montgomery would be uh, buying items, this and that, as a way to be a helping hand for Good Shepherd. Can you mind sharing what are the items that they could buy, or uh, if to buy a gift card, then which places could they buy it from? Thank you again, uh, Vincent, for inviting us and giving us this opportunity to share what we do in LA for the last uh, 39 years. So most of the things that the women and children need are uh, basic things, um, toiletry, shampoo, soap, lotion, and if women move out, whatever you have in the house, like hot, dishes, we need those too for gifting the women when they move out of the building. Regarding gift cards, we also need the socks and undies and all of that. But um, we, have to we have toys right now, so yeah. But for gift cards, because some of the students in our uh, buildings, they go to private schools sometimes. They need special uh, outfit, uniform. And so sometimes they cannot afford to go to school. I think one of the two children for the past couple of months didn't show up in school. We asked them why, because they don't have the uniform to go to school. So if you uh, buy gift cards, you can buy them at uh, home Walmart and uh, on Target. That we need those as well. Or Old Navy, those are the three. Oh, and Old Navy, those three, okay, that they can go and buy uniforms. <laughs> Anything else we need? No. You can code everything system. Mm -hmm. But if, I'm going to pitch this one. If you know of any family members who want to help financially, financially, we do need help financially. Uh, right now, I came to Good Shepherds in September, uh, in July. I have been fixing plumbing issues. I was caught out because of that. We need to cut off the water a certain time tomorrow. So I have to make the call. So if you know of any family member who wants to give financial, you can do that too. We, we accept money to check credit card or real estate. Anything that would help us. Do you have any question for us at all? So if you go out there, you see a person living on the street. What can you do for a person now that you know a little bit about how the homeless, how the people who have no home or housing on the street? Like Randy said, just say hi to them. That's what they need. Hi, how are you? Just be kind to the person, that's it. Nothing else. Okay. So if you have no questions, I'll give the phone back the mic back to your teacher. Uh, thank you, students, for uh, your time uh, for showing the items uh, respect for our guests today again. Let us thank our guests with a round of applause. On behalf of my Bishop Montgomery, thank you to the Sister Jennifer, Alvira, Randy, and the entire team at Good Shepherd Center. We continue to hold you close enough for your support. Thank you. Yeah. I'm <laughs> <laughs>